Isaiah 45 11 says concerning the works of my hands command me now this is God talking and he's saying command me concerning the works of my hands command me does this mean that that God is in submission to us no absolutely not does it mean we're in control of God no absolutely not what it's saying is we have authority over this earth and we can see that in so many scriptures Luke 10 19 Jesus says behold I give you authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing by any means shall harm you Matthew 16 19 again Jesus is saying behold I give you I give you the keys to the kingdom whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven you can even go all the way back to Genesis 1 and verse 26 where God is saying, let us make man in our image, according to our life, him have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle of the earth, and every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. We are to have dominion over that. Two verses later in verse 28, he says, we are to subdue the earth. We are to control it. And you can read Psalm 115, 16. It says, heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth he has given unto the hands of men. He has given it to us to control, to rule, to reign. And if that's not making sense, picture it in the form of a house or an apartment. You're leasing a house or an apartment. That's your house. You can paint the, paint the walls. You can hang pictures on the walls. You can do whatever you want to that home, but you still don't own it. There's still an owner, but you are in control of it. God owns the earth, the earth and the fullness thereof. It is his, but he has given it to us to rule. He has given it into the hands of men to rule. Now we have the option. Can we exercise the authority that God's given us to walk as overcoming Christians? Yes, absolutely we can. And, and that's what we are called to do because God's part is already done. You can read in John 16, 33, where Jesus is saying, in this world you will have tribulations, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. The Amplified says, I have deprived it of its ability to harm you. Jesus has already overcome the world. Now, we, we just have a choice. Are we gonna walk in that supernatural power of God that's already overcome the world, or are we gonna be defeated Christians? That's what this verse is talking about, command me. We have the authority to walk in that supernatural power that Jesus has already defeated the enemy. He's already overcome the world. We just have to walk in it. Now, if, if that's not making good sense, perfect sense to you, think of it like the electric company. Okay, Let, let's, in this analogy, say the electric, electric company is God. Okay, the electric company has already placed their power plants. They, they've already had them in place. They've already ran the electric lines, whether it be on telephone poles, whether it be under the ground. They are there. They are running to your home. Now, once they get into your home, they are running to the electrical outlets. They are running to the lights. All the wiring is in place. The electric company's job is done. Now you have the authority to flip that switch and turn the light on. Now, you can choose to walk in darkness if you want to. If you want to live in darkness, you, you go right ahead. Just don't flip that switch. God gives us that choice. We can do it if we want to. But God is saying, I've already overcome the world. All you have to do is walk with me. All you have to do is walk with me to walk in that power, to walk in that authority, to walk in the light. Don't walk in darkness. He doesn't want us to, but it's on us. We have the authority to walk in the light if we so choose. And all that comes with is walking in agreement with God. And again, God's part is already done. We can look at 1 Peter 2.24. It says basically the same thing. Jesus, who bore our sins in his body on the tree. So there Jesus is bearing our sins in his own body on the tree that we, having died to sin, might live for righteousness. And by Jesus' stripes, you will be healed. No, no, the scripture says, by Jesus' stripes, you were healed. When Jesus died on the cross, you were healed. He overcame the enemy when he died on the cross. God's part is done. Now, our part, who are we going to walk in agreement with? Amos 3.3 3 says, can two walk together unless they be in agreement? No, they can't. You 
are going to be walking in agreement with either God or with Satan. If you choose to obey God's word, you're walking in agreement with him. But if you don't, you're walking in agreement with Satan. Walk with God. Walk with God. So, so what does that look like? How do we do that? You just simply get in God's word. You open his word and then you're obedient to what it tells you to do. So, so going back to the beginning, well, what does that mean as far as commanding God? Well, you can look at John 14, 14. And in, in this verse, Jesus is saying, if you ask anything according to my name, I will do it. If you ask anything according to my name, I will do it. Well, we need to combine this with a couple other scriptures. You can look at 1 John 5, 14 and 15, and it says that if you ask anything according to my will, if you ask anything according to God's will, he will hear you. And then when he hears us, we can believe and know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him if we ask it according to his will. Okay, so there's two things. We ask it in Jesus' name. We ask according to God's will. So anything that we ask for, we need to make sure that it's according to God's will. The third thing I would add in is Philippians 4, 6, and 7. And it says, Be anxious for nothing, but with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And then the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. So those are three things that we need to do when we request something of God. Pray in Jesus' name. Pray according to God's will with thanksgiving. Okay, so what does that look like? Okay, we, we talked earlier about 1 Peter 2.24, by Jesus' stripes you were healed. Okay, so if you're walking in sickness, what does that look like? Well, it just simply looks like, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Again, with thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord, that by Jesus' stripes I am healed. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, now what can hold you back from receiving that? Well, sin. Opening the door to sin will prevent those blessings from coming in, those provisions from coming in. So what you have to do is examine your life and say, have I opened the door for the enemy to come in in any area? And if you have, repent and close those doors. Keep professing and praying that prayer. Keep praying. Okay, another one, Philippians 4.19. Thank you, God, that you have supplied all of my needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So again, with thanksgiving, according to God's will. We know it's God's will because it's God's word. God's word is God's will. So if you're trying to find a prayer to pray, look in his word. That, those are his promises. That's what we need to be praying because that's God's will. Now, what, where people get in error is saying, okay, well, I, I've submitted my resume to these jobs. I know that God's gonna supply all of my needs. And I need a job to pay my bills, so that's a need of mine. That is a need of yours, to, ha to have an occupation, to have a job, okay? Where we get an error is saying, okay, I submitted my resume to this place. Now I'm going to pray and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that the, this company will hire me. Thank you for providing this job for me. No, wrong, wrong, unless God's told you that you are to work there. And even then, I would say, be careful with that. What we need to be praying is, God's will. Okay, so what does that look like? Okay, Lord, I know that I need a job, so thank you, Lord, for providing work for me. I have, in faith, went out and put in applications. Thank you, Lord, that the place that you want me to work, that I will have favor with those bosses, the hiring managers, the recruiters. Thank you for giving me favor with those people. Thank you for bringing my resume to the top so it will be seen. I bind up anybody from taking that position that is not of you, if that is my position. And any of those jobs that I've applied to that's not of you, I pray that you would close the door. I pray, Lord, that you would just close the door to those positions, that I want to be working where you want me to be working. And thank you for providing that job for me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So again, you're praying God's will. You're not telling God how to do it. That's where we get an error. Don't tell God how to provide your needs. Don't tell God how to heal you. Don't tell God how to fulfill those promises. Let God be God. We're to just speak those promises and declare them. And, and again, with thanksgiving, in Jesus' name, and according to his will. And we can look at Isaiah 43, 26, and it says, put me in remembrance. Put me in remembrance. Remind me. Are we to remind God? Is this saying that that God may not remember, so we need to remind him? No, it's not saying that at all. God, according to Jeremiah 1.12, he watches over his word to perform it. But why does it say we need to remind God? 
Well, what happens when you remind God? What, what happens when you are praying and remind God of His promises? What happens is you remind yourself of God's promises. You're reminding yourself of what God's Word says. And Romans 10, 17 says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So what you're doing is you're reminding God, but what you're really doing, you're reminding yourself of what God's Word says. You're reminding yourself of the Word of God. You're reminding yourself of God's promises. And as you remind yourself, your faith grows. Your faith grows. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. So what you're doing, you're speaking God's Word. You're declaring God's Word. You're requesting God's promises of Him in prayer. But you're reminding yourself of God's Word. You're reminding yourself of the Word of God. You're building your faith so that you can stand on it, so that you can receive God's promises at His appointed time. Speak God's Word. Remind Him of His Word. Pray God's Word. Again, according to His will. Make sure it's according to His will, in His name, with thanksgiving. Be a doer of the Word and not a hearer only. All you need to do is get into the Word of God, read it, and obey it. And as you see those words, stand on those promises of God. Commit them to your prayer life with thanksgiving, in Jesus' name, according to His will. And watch your life turn around.